Comedy Theater in Portland, Oregon, where our March Madness means your kombucha has spoiled. It's late night special! Tonight's special guest, singer and band leader, Pepe Raphael! Model and burlesque artist, Vanity Thor! Yeah, I think it's done for the night. Yeah, so good. Smart. Who Definitely. is watching March Madness or cares about it? Woo! Woo! Welcome to sports! Yeah! yeah. Sports, sports don't matter! I was just going to say, sports don't matter. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's just been so many so many news items. Are, are y'all following the news? Woo! Yeah, okay. A couple of you. Well, let me nothing catch matters. You up. Yeah, nothing, nothing matters. matters. <laughs> Well, uh, here, the big news is the special counsel, Robert Mueller, sent his report on Russia interference. Okay, yeah. Uh, he said it to the Attorney General on Friday. Now, Americans are expected to treat this report like the Bible, something that we haven't read, but we assume it says what we want. <laughs> is that fair? Yeah. I think it's fair. Uh, a 104-year-old woman in the UK in a nursing home as part of her bucket list asked police to arrest her since she had never before broken the law. Yeah. So the police came, they cuffed her, they drove around in a squad car before returning her safely home unharmed. Because after all, she's white. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well Privilege. a water main in northeast Portland, some local news, it burst this week, flooding streets and shutting down power to a large number of residents. Now, according to the city, the water main that burst was over 100 years old. And, you know, Portland, not everything needs to be vintage, okay? Everybody's like, you're ruining, big water's ruining our vintage pipes. Uh, <laughs> it's all Portland. Uh, this week in Indiana, a runaway cow attempted to evade the police by hiding out at a Chick-fil-A. Mm. This is a true story. Unfortunately, the disguise the cow chose was as a chicken. Mm. So she'll be remembered in the form of nuggets with your choice of dipping sauce. Mm. Aww. Ranch. Eat yeah, okay. more chicken. <laughs> <laughs> well, a California man who was recently forced to lower the height of his backyard fence has decided to get even with his neighbors by displaying mannequins having a naked party. Ow! Now, as an extra jab to his nosy neighbors, he also challenged them to figure out which one of them was him. <laughs> they couldn't do it. I heard they couldn't uh, do it. Yeah. <laughs> Bill Gates recently joined Jeff Bezos as one of two men in the entire world with a net worth over $100 billion. At the same time, right now, you can go to Amazon.com on your Windows PC and buy a t-shirt that says, Flint still doesn't have clean water. Yeah. Because yeah. it's true. Yeah. It won't help. And, no. Yeah, no. But and you only, can do that. You can do that. You can do it. Only a small amount of that will go to Bezos. Yeah, yeah. Well, a New Jersey man has recently returned a library book that he checked out in 1966 when he was 13 years old. And when asked why it took so long, he said, fuck you, I'm a slow reader. <laughs> and then he checked the book out again, so. <laughs> this week, MySpace announced that they lost all user data from 2016 prior which was a shock to millions of people who were like, my space still exists? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, a UK woman has sent, was sent to the hospital this week after having a stroke while receiving oral sex, okay? Now, when she was asked about the experience, the woman said, well, this isn't what I wanted when I said I wanted a mind-blowing orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> Research led by the University of Southampton 
revealed that rogue waves are becoming less frequent, but more extreme. When asked about it, the rogue waves replied, we're just getting older, we're slowing down a bit, but we still want people to know that we can go to the beach and fuck you up. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I, thought that I actually thought yeah. in my head that we were going to, uh, I know what the joke is, but in my head I was going to say, just like orgasms as you get older, less, less frequent but more powerful. Good to know. Or more frequent and more powerful. Well, <laughs> two sons in New Jersey. <laughs> there you go, there you go, there you go. Well, okay, so two sons in New Jersey have given their father a birthday to remember by posting his face and his phone number on a billboard and asking people to wish him happy birthday. Now, their father said that he appreciates the gesture, but he could do without the 5,000 daily dick pics uh, because he only wanted about half of those, okay? So he's like half of it in half. So Ronald Reagan's daughter said in an interview that her father would be horrified by Trump's mm. America. I mean, sure, Reagan would have loved the income inequality, yep. the excess military yeah. spending, the giant unnecessary tax cuts, oh, yeah. the threats oh, yeah. to women's mm -hmm. rights, the threats to LGBTQ mm -hmm. rights, the anti-choice yeah. restrictions, the environmental yep. destruction, the sale of the government to the yep. highest bidder, <laughs> and the wholesale atmospheric corruption. Loved it. But a reality star as president? No. Not okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, a new study shows that going without sleep leaves the human body basically drunk. You know, at 17 hours without sleep, you're essentially at a 0 .08 blood alcohol level, the legal standard for driving drunk. And at 24 hours, you're at a 0 0.1. And at 48 hours, you're a freshman at Oregon State. And at 72 hours, you're the professor. <laughs> <laughs> High-ranking Democrats on Capitol Hill are calling for an investigation into a pro-Trump former owner of the questionable chain of massage parlors in Southern Florida. Democrat, Democrats want to make sure that if there were any wrongdoing, nobody will be getting off easily. No. Ah! Hey, nice no. Bitch. Ah! Lovely, what a lovely night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very excited about our main guest tonight. Has anybody um, heard of Pepe Raphael? Woo! Yep. He's a hero, and everybody's just going to be obsessed with him from this night on, as I am. Yeah, if you haven't heard of Pepe, we're super excited. It's the Pepe show. We're going to have music. We're going to have an interview, all kinds of stuff. I'm just fixing my mic over here. Yeah, that's fine. Little... I'll just vamp a little bit. Yeah, tell me about your week. Well, I took some surveys. Has anybody ever taken surveys for money? Yeah. 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 Um, well, I went to the doctor, and then all of a sudden I got like this thing about back and neck pain, and um, somebody just like they sent me a letter, and it had a two dollar bill in it, and it was just like, "Thank you for reading this letter." What? And it got my attention. <laughs> And then I called, and then I qualified, and yeah, so I got like $30. That is really wow. bizarre. They paid you to come see them. Yeah, well, I did it over the phone. And then as soon as I got off the oh, phone, the survey. Okay. a no ID caller called me, and I was like, do I answer this? And I usually just hit like an auto text reply, like, I'm on my way. <laughs> but um, I was like, I got to answer it. I answer it. It's another survey for a jury association. And I was like, how did you get my number? And it was just like, we just have a machine that generates random numbers in your area code. Did they give you $2? No. <laughs> but so you they would have. They would have. <laughs> well, they wanted me to come in, and it was like a whole day thing, and it paid really well. And I was like, this is amazing. And That's incredible. Yeah. Did you get a $2 bill or $2? A $2 bill. Because I heard, I heard at strip clubs, uh, they're giving out change in $2 bills now. Yeah. So they were just trying to feed your habit, I guess, <laughs> or show what theirs is. Well, I've actually never so. been to a strip club ever in my life. You haven't? No. no. 
Not no. anyone, not anywhere, anything? The night is young, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just never, I, I never understood it, because it was like, your job is to turn me on, and then I go home. What? Right. <laughs> that, is, that is the strange part about yeah. it. I, just, yeah. I went to one on my 33rd birthday. It was the first time I ever went. I went with three friends, and we got four simultaneous lap dances. Mm -hmm. And the whole time, all I was thinking is like, what's her story? Like, <laughs> yeah. I just really wanted to get to know her. Like, what's going on? What did she and major she in college? Over, yeah, she came over later, and she said she makes $80,000 a year working one weekend a month and she was uh, getting a degree in like uh, psychology. Wow. And I was like either this is true or this is her very accurate assessment of what I want to hear right now. <laughs> 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 She's got it going on. I don't feel bad. <laughs> no, I well I went I in college I was a classmate with a stripper and she taught me this very important lesson that I thought was really cool is there's two ways to win at being a stripper is to one never let anyone know or two just be like loud and proud and just own it and she was like the own it stripper and she did the same thing where she was like I have so much more money than all my boyfriends I'm going to college I'm doing the thing like yeah do you need five dollars right. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes. I worked for this I'm gonna share it uh, speaking of women mm -hmm. Uh, it's National, uh, well, it's, uh, yeah, National Women's History Month. Yeah. Our kids. And as you know, like, the past few weeks I've been doing a big project. We've opened another space here in the same building, a little white box theater. Uh, and, like, whenever I'm in the middle of a big thing, uh, I find I get a lot of unsolicited advice. Mm. And, uh... And, I, and, I, and this, is just, this is just a serious conversation about like being a woman. I'm like, and I feel like my credibility, I really feel how people don't take my word for things, you know, during that process. And I'm like, I, I measured this five times, and then I have to measure it again to prove. And I'm like, I don't know if it's because I'm a woman or a short woman or a soft short woman. Or a sexy. Yeah, you know, I got ample bosom woman. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> uh, maybe people well, just- Well, some people don't trust attractive people. Aw, well that's sort of sweet and sad at the same <laughs> time. Is that a compliment or a It is, because it's always like, they're so hot, they're dumb. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and, and like I'm sure I could like wear spiked heels and pile my hair on my head, you know, it's just, I don't want to be that person. So uh, I just want to be who I am and be believed. So we worked with the writers to do something, because I, I know I'm not alone experiencing things like this. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we all know that there's an experience that women have where they'll say something and they don't get credit for what they said, and a man will get credited for what they said. And throughout history, w women have also lost out to men credit for some major uh, inventions uh, in the world. So we just wanna take a minute to do a bit that we call, That's What She Did. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> and we're gonna talk about a, a few of these things. Now, let's start with uh, tarot cards. You've all heard of tarot cards, right? Yeah. Yeah. You, are you guys familiar with this deck? It's one of the most famous decks. It's the Rider Waite Tarot deck, and this was named after Rider, which is the publishing company, and Waite, which uh, is Arthur Waite, uh, who who was the man who was behind the writing of it, but not credited at all was Pamela Coleman Smith, who was the illustrator behind the entire thing, mm. and through her, even though her illustrations have become the standard for all other tarot decks since then, uh, and she, it didn't get called the Rider Waite Smith deck; mm -mm. it was just called the the Rider Waite deck, uh, and that's why we're all going to say together. That's, That's what, what she did. did. Yeah. That's right. And you all know Monopoly, the game that we love to hate. Yeah. Because it takes too fucking long to play, <laughs> and it and it glorifies capitalism. Mm. Well, uh, the person that was credited this is a guy named Charles Darrow. Charles oh, Darrow. I hate you, Charles. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But this unemployed heating salesman ripped this idea off from, you guessed it, a woman. Her uh. name's Elizabeth Maggie. She created the original version of the game, which was called the Landlord's Game. 
And it was actually to satirize uh, capitalism and demonstrate the evils of capitalism and monopolies. That's right. You know what? That's, That's what she did. <laughs> so not only did he rip it off, he changed what it meant for uh, the worse. I hate you, Charles. All right, have you guys heard of a little thing called DNA? Oh, geez. it's getting lively. Yeah. The double helix structure right here. These guys got a Nobel Pre oh. uh, Peace Prize for it, but they didn't have any help from anybody else, right? Or did they? Yeah. Rosalind Franklin, she was the first person to capture a photograph image of DNA. And then her research was shared with Watson and Crick without her permission, stolen. And despite her huge contributions to this discovery, she was excluded from their Nobel Prize. DNA? More like DNA, no thank you. Yeah. That's what, what she did. did. Are you a woman who's ever had credit that for something you've done given to a man? Come up here with us. Come up here with me on the stage. We're going to honor you right now. Do you all know what tall mover oil is? Probably not. It was used in a life-saving cure for lepros leprosy, supposedly created by Arthur Dean. Now this is a picture of James Dean, because I couldn't find a picture of Arthur Dean, which is just fine, because Arthur Dean doesn't deserve to be remembered, because no. he stole that credit from a brilliant chemist named Alice Ball. She was just 23 years old when she developed the injectable leprosy treatment using Palmubra oil. Hey, guess what? That's what she did. And then when she died suddenly at the age of 24, Took all the credit. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur motherfucking Dean. <laughs> Who here has heard of America? <laughs> Y'all know about the Lewis and Clark expedition? Yeah, there's even a university here named after Lewis and Clark. But you know who's left out of this painting? Fucking Sacagawea, that's who. Sacagawea traveled five. She guided, she saved their asses multiple times. By the way, she was pregnant the whole time. That's, That's what she did. And in exchange for all her work, her husband was paid $500. No. And all she got was one of these shitty coins that nobody wants. Anybody ever heard of Elvis Presley? No. Yeah. Yeah, he's the one who sold 2 million copies of this album. So good. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I dedicate that bit to Bill McKinley. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Without that, it would not exist. Yeah, Bill, you just you you nailed it. You nailed it. You did. Thanks. You, thanks. You did so good. Hey, no, you were great. I had a you part. I had a part for you. Yeah. Good job. Good job. You motherfucker. Yeah. I am right here. I am right. Well, you'll get the credit. You'll get the credit here. It's me, Stacy. Oh shit! Fucking <laughs> Lewis and Clark are you, stole my are you, credit. Are you in the back? I'm you? cropped out of the okay, picture. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. That was fun. Did you all know all those people did all those things? 
Yeah, welcome. Now welcome to 2019, <laughs> where women start taking their power back. From history. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jay. Whew. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. I'm feeling very excited about what's coming up next. And, and that is our musical guest, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, friends and lovers. Uh, all the way from right here in Portland. Yep. Uh, this is a, a band that's absolutely fantastic. We're so excited to have them here tonight. Uh, they're going to have a show tomorrow that I'll tell you more about. Uh, but please welcome to the stage, Seda. <laughs> I like that jacket, Pepe. We have to undress before we do this. <laughs> it's hot up here. Yep. Oof, sorry about that. One, two, 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 uno. Two, 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 two. Oh. There it is. The squeaky, the squeaky wheel gets the sound. <laughs> uh, we are the group Seda. That's, hi, Stacy. Hi, hi Jay. Hi, I'm doing well. And uh, yeah, we're from Portland. Uh, this is my good friend Nick at the Cajon. Dad, wait for the, don't clap right now. Nick at the Cajon. <laughs> Brenna at the guitar. Mary at the guitar. He's the band leader. My name is Pepe Rafael. Thank you for being here. We're going to do one song. Uh, this one is uh, Salsa. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it's Salsa. Ooh. All right, let's see how it goes.
yo le voy a comprar la paleta y la borracha y el sabroso cusumé y el coco acaramelado ay como le gusta a usted se va thank you very much Hello, Stacy. Hello, Pepe. So Hello, good to Jay. have oh. you here. Yeah. It's the sinking couch. Yeah. <laughs> Score big in the city liquidator sale. Yeah. Wow, wow. You couldn't even afford the one at city liquidator. That's okay. <laughs> this was like some furniture warehouse That's okay. by the airport. Uh, so looks nice pretty to, though. The bed. It's, be it's beautiful. No, no, it's very comfortable. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We are so excited to have you here. That nice was, to be had. That was beautiful. So beautiful. For those of you who don't know Pepe Raphael, he has performed uh, with many symphonies, with the opera, uh, with Pink Martini, if you've heard of Pink Martini, Three Leg Torso, like so many groups traveled the world, so many exciting things. Like you are a really well-established, wonderful, talented human being. Thank you. Um, yes, and uh, <laughs> the good thing is... <laughs> No, I, I no, no, I, 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 I don't. Okay, so here's, here's a, you don't know this, and you maybe don't know this. This is not uh, my first time on the couch, as you can imagine. <laughs> I've been casted many times. And, <laughs> and, and no, but this is my first time in, a, uh, in this, uh, this, doing this kind of format show. Oh, really? Yes, I have That's never, amazing. I have never been, I've been interviewed on the radio, but I've never been interviewed with a live audience. Uh, well, that's awesome. Well, I know, thank you. So, so you know, it's like, wow, I, when you get to, to be my age, which by the way, 35, mm, you are so sweet. No, <laughs> no, and, and please don't clap because birthdays has nothing, you have nothing to do with it. It has to do with my mom and it has to do with the day I was born, but. Uh, anyway, I just, uh, and I have no shame sharing this with you. I just turned, oh, can you say bad words? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. fuck, okay. I've already said a lot. Oh, today. good. <laughs> <laughs> I have a horrible mouth. I learned yeah. English, English is my second language. It's like, God, what was I watching when I learned English? <laughs> 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 uh, I, just, I just turned 60. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> I know. And it's, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, let me tell you, because none of you know what I'm talking about. When you get, uh, I don't know, 58, 58, 55, there is very little, very little that one hasn't done. Mm. So this is uh, to, to be my first at 60, it makes me curious as to, oh my God, what next, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, I love that. I love that we get to do that with you. And you and I have known each other for years. You took some classes here, I think is how we I first did, met. I did, I did. Uh, oh my God, Stacy, Jay. <laughs> 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 Again, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna say it because it's vulgar, but anyway, <laughs> hell. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, yes, I have done some stuff. I've done, uh, I've been the performance art, I've dabbed into many things and I've performed professionally into many areas. And I thought, oh my God, improv. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, we were talking about it. It's like, because you used to be a professional dancer. Dude! Yeah, so that's what I've been leading up to. It's like, not only have you accomplished all this in music and singing and music, Look at this he just posted the other day. Wow. <laughs> that's Pepe. <laughs> like, that's a whole other life that you have led that I didn't even know, and I already know you as a person so accomplished in this other world. Oh, Tell thank us you. a little, is that, was that in Spain? No, that's, 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 here? that's here with Pacific Ballet Theater. That's about 33 years ago. That's so If I was to try to do that again, it would take me about three years and the body cast to recover. <laughs> <laughs> and I could possibly do it maybe once, and that's it. Yeah. Okay. Life, life so would be did over. So did you start dancing at a very young age? No, I did not. Actually, I was a, a very late bloomer. I did not start dancing until I was 18, and I started in, in Madrid. I was born in Madrid, Spain, and I started in Madrid. So um, I moved to the States in, um, in 1980. 
And Did you come right to Portland? No, I, I went to New York. Oh, that's why you swear. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Now I know. Why do you say that word so much? New York. Mm -hmm. It's their fault. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. So I I I, I came to uh, to the states in 1980, and I came basically to dance, and I wanted to dance professionally. I was not professional yet, so I turned professional in '81, and I, I danced in New in in, in New York with. Uh, Ballet Hispanic of New York and Princeton Ballet and New Jersey Ballet and anyway uh, and then Pennsylvania Ballet and then I auditioned for Pennsylvania Ballet Theater and I came here in '85. It's even at sixty the amount you have done. <laughs> it seems like you would need to be like a hundred and twenty. Oh no, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty yeah. amazing. I'm a vampire. So Are I you? I know. <laughs> <laughs> now that makes the most sense yeah. of anything you've said tonight. I mean, are you an incredibly disciplined person? Is that how you... Interesting you say that. Yes. You see? How, you're so, this is so good. That comes around back again to the improv. You see? Okay. So uh, I have some training, a lot of training with ballet. So ballet is like this, dude. You get the technique and you sort of can sort of do it. Then you study. You study whatever it is that you're going to showcase. And you practice, and you practice until it gets really good. You don't do it before it gets really good. You don't do it after it gets stale. You do it just when it's right. Improv, <laughs> you don't practice. <laughs> <laughs> you have the balls <laughs> and again, I'm not gonna, anyway, you have the courage to just be willing to make a fool of yourself. And honestly, I'm not smart enough for improv. I'm just not. It's brutal. It's brutal. I failed miserably. It's the one thing I have done that I am still have anxiety dreams. <laughs> And I'm I have so per, proud and I that have, we got to give you and that I, experience, I, I, <laughs> You know, it's like, what's worse? And again, I'm not, we did the, we opened the, the uh, it was the Rose Garden when the Blazers, and we played in front of 36,000 people. We got a spot, and I get to my point in a second, we got a spot of 15 seconds on the first break of the first quarter. Not that I know sports, that's what they told us, right? That's, that's not very much. So we run to the middle of the floor and the Blazers were getting their ass kicked by some lame team, but they were losing that, they were mad. And the place was packed. And uh, I have the group called the Battle Blondes. Uh, and so we run to the center of the, st of the floor and, and why, why did I choose to sing Cuban Pete? So, but I did, <laughs> I, I, I did, and we got booed. Oh. Oh. The entire stadium, we got booed. Oh. And we were under the little uh, uh, triangle thingy, and I thought, hmm, maybe they're replaying the game that whatever it is. <laughs> 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 maybe they replay whatever it is they just did, and they're not liking it. It couldn't be us. It was us. Oh, that's horrible. And I didn't give a shit. <laughs> Coming here to do improv horrified me. That, <laughs> to me, going in front of the entire stadium was like, whatever. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> but here, it's like, I swear to God, I was, I was sitting in the car. I took it glad we just sit in the car and go, <sighs> okay. <laughs> and walk in and be, I was pretty bad, right? You were horrible. I, <laughs> <laughs> I was horrible. He, he, he put so many restrictions on my, on my approach. He's like, okay, Pep, from now on, no blue material, just wholesome family stuff. No, no cursing, no, okay, no, oh, no, 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 okay. For now on, no jokes, okay? <laughs> From now on, just like he says, for now on, just don't come back. It should have 
He should have just said that. And these aren't rules for everyone. These were just rules he was making up for you. Just for me. Just Everybody else was like, clear. oh, go, go, go. No, you're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then the worst part about it is that I could see him trying <laughs> to make me feel better. <laughs> Which, because I've been around, it only made me feel worse. Aww. So no, you're, you're doing great. <laughs> no, no, just, yeah. Uh, did you pay today? Good, good. <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's tricky. I, I, I really have tremendous respect for improv. I, can, I would never do it. I have no interest. And I am just amazed. I'm well, still looking for the answer. What is it? What? Well, I feel like if I, I, I mean, I could nerd out about improv forever, but I think that there's a different mindset for somebody who's classically trained. You know, it's very difficult. There's, there are people in certain professions who have a very difficult time, and it's actually healthy to work on it because it exercises that other part. But if you're used to being classically trained and being by the book and doing things precisely all the time, takes a very long time to unlearn that. Yeah, or like a therapist has a hard time doing improv because they're, they're taught to w withhold their own personal emotions when someone's talking, and all of a sudden they're supposed to uh, react right away. It goes against that training. People who mm. come from the sci a science background, they have a difficult time with improv sometimes because it's all about rigorously saying no to everything. Science says someone says their theory, and then everyone else goes, no, that can't be right. And then they challenge, 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 whereas improv's about saying yes and. Mm -hmm. So depending on your background, improv can be more or less challenging because you've trained yourself as an adult to, to work some muscles so much that it's hard to do it. Yeah. Learning it if, it, if it's, you know, if you're not busy having a career around the world playing amazing music and you're struggling in your life, sometimes it's helpful to overcome some of those habits yeah. through that's improv. A, that's a great explanation. No, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. And again, it goes back to that. Because, you know, I did, I did stand up for about eight years. I was at the Harvey's. And I was actually, I, I got to co-headline. And I actually developed uh, about 45 minutes at some point when I was fresh and I was on yeah, top of it. Just a little bit. Just, you know. You know. No, yeah, it's no, but it was good. So just, I did, I did a one so, job. Just so you all know, five minutes of good stand up <laughs> is really hard for people to but do. But I practice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 It's not like, okay, go. Okay, be, be funny. No. <laughs> I was home and I taped myself and I tried it when nobody was watching and I tried it with one person and it was a ho, ho, ho. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but yeah, okay, that's a great explanation. I imagine yeah. so. I imagine yeah, so. Yeah, well, we've, we've had acrobats here for some of our variety shows, yeah. and they always have such a frustrating time because they come in and the improvisers all have a beer and they're eating pizza. And the acrobats, like, I haven't had milk in three weeks, getting ready for this three minute thing I'm about to do. It's very hard to be around. You're all be like, we're like, oh, the show started. And they've been, stre <laughs> <laughs> they've been oh. stretching for 45 minutes. Well, you are a delight, Pepe. Yeah, we love you. you are. And your, your stand-up is very good. It's very I, good. I know. You like storytelling stand-up, yeah. Well, we're going to bring out another guest to join you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, who's somebody that you have yeah. worked with and met once before, or once or twice before. Uh, please welcome to the stage, Vanity Thorne. Yeah! yeah. Hello. time for vanity. Yeah. Can you see half my hand? I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> Bada bing. You're good at every angle, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> She's so gorgeous. Vanity's a model and a burlesque performer uh, and doing a show here next Saturday night in this time slot. We'll be taking our first break since we started Late Night Special and be Vanity's Vixens here. Do you yeah. want to tell everybody a little bit about Vanity's Vaudeville Vixens? Yeah, uh, we are an amazing new uh, immersive theater experience centered around 1905 Portland on the vaudeville circuit. Wow. So we'll have some burlesque and we'll have some uh, live music, but everything from the costumes to the performances will be set in like 1905. And you base this on actual Portland history from yes, that era? absolutely. We've been working with our local historian, Melissa Lang, to really get down our script and make it like true to the time period. 
So when you say it's immersive, will will there be pieces taking place everywhere? How's that going? There go? will be. Yeah, actually, I think that's the most exciting part. Uh, we're going to have a raffle girl. Um, she has her own little backstory, and she's going to be doing basically improv <laughs> or like our burlesque version. Close your ears, Pepe. She'll be doing some improv and like working with the audience a little bit, uh, and then we'll also have a snake oil salesman who Ooh. might be, you know. Selling some hair tonic, uh, yeah. So we have a full uh, we have a full range of people who will be acting throughout. That's great. And you started the show as part of a GearCon. Yeah. GearCon. So, you want to uh, tell what's GearCon? So I mean. GearCon is Portland's only steampunk festival. Mm -hmm. And when we started GearCon, gosh, it would have been six years ago. They needed a burlesque show and. Uh, and I wanted to do something vaudeville. And since steampunk is all about a reimagining of the Victorian era with a little bit of sci-fi thrown in there, <laughs> I was like, well, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> right That's in my wheelhouse. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so yeah, this will be um, the, fifth, the sixth year that I'm with GearCon doing it, and we're brand new to Curious. Yeah, and you know, this is, yeah. 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 It's exciting. And it's our, it's our, we've had a couple burlesque pieces here and there. This is our first full-blown burlesque show here at Curious, so we're very excited about that. Now, we have a game that we thought would be great to play with <laughs> both of you and Jay. Mm -hmm. uh, it has to do with body positivity and music and everything that's represented here on this couch. And we call this game Solo or Big O. Oh. <laughs> You guys would be cheering more if you knew what you were about to see. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I have gone on the Very internet no and I have collected a bunch of faces. The, f the faces, the expressions on these people's faces are either because they are soloing on guitar or vocally, or they are having an orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna see who does best at distinguishing between guitar face and orgasm face. And y'all are gonna help us. Yeah, and audience, you can help as well. You guys ready for this? Yeah. Yes, yeah. All right, here's our first face. Is that a guitar, is that a, is that a solo face or oh face? That's guitar. Solo. Solo. Because right? there's solo. like some 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 Solo. Solo. So I heard solo. more solo. Couple big O's. It is a guitar. Yeah. 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 You, know the, you don't know the answer. I don't know the answer. I'm playing too. I'm playing. Okay, okay, okay. I just felt. Yeah. I just felt. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Seen so you, so it's all tied up. Come on, buddy. Uh, except we can for do you it. over there, you said big O. You're negative one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, next one. That's solo. That's solo. solo. That's an O. That's an O face. That can be no. both. I I know that lip twin. No, thing. that's that's solo, dude. What do you guys say, audience? <laughs> solo. 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 That is the guitar. Yeah. That's the, the band is spelled Haim, but it's pronounced Haim, right? Yeah, and she's famous for her facial <laughs> expressions. Dude. Uh, that's a great one, yeah. for sure. All right, next up. So Jay, it's uh, two, two to one yeah. over there. Next up. Oh. I'm going to agree. I'm going to say that's a big O. No. It looks familiar. <laughs> and I don't play guitar. <laughs> Uh, yeah, okay, we'll go with, I'll go with O. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody? Oh, oh. Across the board, O. One, a couple souls in there. What is it, Anthony? It is an orgasm. Yeah, baby. With a shirt on. Yeah, we got it, we got it. I like any opportunity to clap. We're three, time. we're three and O. We saw it on the internet. She's like yeah. the poster child for this, uh, not poster child, poster woman. Uh, <laughs> inappropriate to call her anything else <laughs> on 10 levels. Uh, <laughs> Uh, of a photo series of uh, people having orgasms. Yeah. Uh, wow. Although I'm gonna say, knowing the camera there, you know, is there keeps people still trying to look pretty. <laughs> All right, next up, <laughs> a whole face or solo face. Oh, it's, you know, <laughs> that has got, 
That is a, that's so low, but I want it to be an O face. So <laughs> I'm gonna say like he's cramping. Solo, solo. That's so, if you make that face when you have an orgasm, call somebody. <laughs> that looks that's, like somebody I know. That is, is wrong. Solo. Yeah. 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 It's scary both ways, really. <laughs> All right, next up. Oh, okay. I really hope that's a big O. Yeah, that's a big O. Big O? Big O. I'm going to go, uh, hey, I'm going to go solo, but again, what do I know? I'm a guy. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is, that is a yeah, no. Okay. Oh. just a couple minutes after the show and it'll be a short quick set just for you yeah. so stick around for that it'll be very beautiful yeah mm -hmm. but first we're going to bring up a stand-up yeah. she's done uh, all jane comedy festivals she performs uh, all over portland please welcome to the stage the very very funny kate murphy, kate murphy. how we doing everyone My face is so big. Oh, no. <laughs> Do you guys like the springtime? You like this weather? Yeah. Oh, not me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I get burnt walking around inside Fred Meyer, so it's not my power season. I love wintertime. I love the cold. I love the cold because I also get to wear a lot of dumb fucking jackets like this, cover up these wonky ass tits. Anybody else? <laughs> Hiding from <laughs> true selves? Yeah? Thank you. My tits don't match, is what I'm trying to say. They don't. They're not supposed to match, right? They're not supposed to be... I don't know why I'm singling you out specifically, but right there, like... <laughs> sisters, not twins. That's what somebody told me. <laughs> sisters, not twins. Mine are unrelated, turns out. Not even the same family. That's how bad it is. <laughs> Next door neighbors? Yeah, like, if, the, if these are twins, like... This is Arnold Schwarzenegger and this is Danny DeVito. Does that make sense now? Like, can you see that? Visual, like, one's got a lot of muscle, the other one's like, weirdly hairy. It's a whole thing. It's like, 
There's always a good one, right? I have a good one. The Arnold Schwarzenegger, just nipple where it's supposed to be. Optimistic all day long. Just so excited. And then Danny DeVito is just kind of staring off into the distance, just <laughs> flapping in the wind, right? This is the one in the mirror every morning that's like, well, at least you have a personality, you know, just kind of like, it's okay. It's, someone asked me like, how bad is the bad one really? And I was like, oh man, without showing you, just like imagine like a translucent jellyfish. <laughs> you get it, fresh out of the water, yeah. Maybe take your favorite Maybelline cover girl, whatever you need to paint it to look like a human boob, but while it's still kind of wet and sticky, you like accidentally drop it behind the couch. <laughs> right? You pick it up, you're like, I don't even own a cat. That's what it looks like. Uh, thank you for laughing at that. That's kind of new. <laughs> I'm always working on the titty bit. I was uh, literally earlier this week, <laughs> I was dreaming, I was having this dream that I was just like, crushing it on the stage, right? Just crushing it at stand-up. Do you ever do that? Dream of me crushing it at stand-up? Yeah, <laughs> now you will. And uh, I was just crushing it, doing the titty bit. And at the very end, I had like a brand new tag that just destroyed. And uh, I woke up kind of from the dream and I was like, oh my God, write it down. So I wrote it down in my notebook next to my bed. I woke up the next morning. I was like, I cannot wait to find out what the brand new end of my titty joke is that I had in my sleep. All I had written in my sleep turns out was, uh, it's like they're both pieces of fruit, but one's just like a really old piece of fruit. So they're not all winners, <laughs> but you know, I dropped it. <laughs> so I had to try it out. <laughs> uh. If you saw them one by one, it's a long bit. Uh, if you saw it right, they're fine. Like there's a board right here. It's like a sick, twisted game show. Like, is it the same person, right? It's like, that's fine. Take the board away, squeeze them together. This whole middle section turns into this very like lazy-eyed, like Steve Buscemi face, right? That's like <laughs> sexy in its visual authenticity. Okay, I lost some of you guys with the Steve Buscemi face. <laughs> That's okay. He's cute, right? He's cute. I yeah, I don't know. I grew up with a pug. That probably has something to do with it. I just <laughs> I just want to clean his face wrinkles with a Q-tip. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, my brother rides an electric unicycle. It's not a punchline, but thank you for laughing. It is funny. It is. He rides, have you seen those things? He rides uh, a one wheel electric unicycle. We're like constantly fighting all the time because he won't wear a helmet. And I'm like, that's a very dangerous vehicle. You need to wear a helmet. And this is my brother's logic about his electric unicycle. He's like, I don't want to wear a helmet. I'll look stupid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he is so stupid. <laughs> I love my brother, he's the stupidest person I know. People do not believe me when I tell them this next story. They don't believe me, 100%. Went to Fred Meyer with my brother, he got a bag of family-sized Doritos. And he was like, look, family-sized Doritos. And I was like, great choice. We went home, he opened up the bag, and he was like, oh damn, these are just normal sized Doritos. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he was expecting. I was like, one Dorito that could feed a whole family? I don't know what he thought was gonna happen. <laughs> I caught him microwaving a block of ramen once. No water, just the block of ramen uncooked with a piece of cheese on top of it. And then I watched him pull it out of the microwave open that little seasoning packet and just like sprinkle it on top of the bubbling cheese. And then he picked it up and he ate it like a cookie. And I think about it every fucking day of my life. <laughs> guess, how old do you think he is? Just based on that, like take a wild guess. 30, that's right, he's 30, great guess. That's exactly how old he is, <laughs> you know that? <laughs> yeah, oh man. Legitimately, actually, I know, I should nominate him for Queer Eye for sure. I, or everybody in Portland. I'm literally just looking for a man over the age of 30 with a bed frame. Can't find one in the city of Portland. Turns out it's impossible. 
Thank you. Three guys over here didn't even move. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's I. One guy once asked me about box spring counts. I was like, get it off the floor. Like I can't bring my standards any lower. Okay. You guys, I think that's it for me. Have a great rest of your show. Thank hey, you so much. Murphy. Oh my God. <laughs> She's lovely. She is lovely. That was hilarious. And, and just for those of you who couldn't see, the gentleman she pointed out was like this. <laughs> you have won a free bed frame from yeah! Late Night Special! <laughs> it's in my backyard. You pick it up, you get it. So that's how it works. <laughs> it's listed on Craigslist. Uh, that was so fun. Yeah. Uh, but now uh, we're going to bring out our second guest. How many of you have ever played Magic the Gathering? By round of applause. Nerds. Yeah. I love this is the same Absolutely. audience that didn't care about March Madness or the news, no. but got super excited by Magic the Gathering. Yeah. Uh, this is a writer who's written for Magic the Gathering, now works uh, for Riot Games. Please welcome my friend, Michael Echow. Echow. Oh my god, I love this. Wow. Please sit. Come on over, have a seat. Oh, man, it oh, is careful. very bouncy. It is. Yeah. I think we need some pillows. It's very deep. Yeah. It's a very deep couch. Uh, hi, welcome. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks for, for having being me. here. Yeah. So excited. Uh, we have a bunch of uh, Magic the Gathering fans out oh, here. Okay, cool. Yeah. Sweet. Great. What card did you write specifically? Uh, so I worked at Magic a couple years ago. So the set that I worked the most on was called Battle Bond. And uh, I made some other uh, stuff as well, including a set that was released for, uh, for China uh, that had some original characters and stuff. So. Mm. That's great. Yeah. Did you write it in Chinese? Uh, yeah, so that was, uh, those cards were specifically for a set that was uh, inspired by a Chinese setting. And so it was this kind of really specific, kind of quirky magic deck, so. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. And at home, at your house, where I've been. Brag. <laughs> 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 when you let me and my boyfriend stay there. Uh, you, had, you had a really beautiful set of special cards, like foil cards? Yeah, what? yeah. So uh, Magic gets printed on giant sheets and then cut up and made into the individual cards and packed into decks and things like that. And uh, while I worked there, I won a little uh, prize, which was pretty cool, which is a sheet before it gets all cut up. So. That's so cool. It was awesome. So when you're writing for like a card game like that, how does it work? Are you writing in a group? Or are you assigned like this is the deck and you get to figure it out? How does it work? Yeah, so writing for games is a lot of working together. So it's a lot of working in teams. And uh, you know, there's a lot of different kinds of stuff that we're trying to tackle and uh, kind of creatively come up with fun things about. So it's like in the game, uh, you, need a, you need a creature that is so big and whatever. So we have to come up with a creative like uh, concept for what that creature is and stuff like that. Is it, do, do multiple people come up with things and you pitch it and the best one gets in there? Uh, usually there's a creative lead who kind of uh, does most of the pitching and then uh, other writers kind of chime in as well. So it's a very collaborative and not so much combative kind of uh, arena. Oh, that's too bad. So do you know no. about, <laughs> do you know about the, the one magic card that was like, there was only like, 10 and there's those videos they're like this is it it's like a lotus or something yeah so what is, what is it the most famous magic card is called a black lotus yeah. and uh if you don't play collectible card games there's some things that are, are very old and no longer made that can be worth a lot of money so i believe this card sells for around ten thousand dollars yeah wow. and Yikes. uh it's very hard it, it, again they only printed a, a small number of them and uh so whenever somebody has one uh it's always really exciting or if they find one uh, at a garage sale or something yeah, crazy. Yeah, well, on this YouTube video, it's like he found it in a box and they're like filming him opening it up and he's like, and there it is. He's like, just everybody like started having O faces. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they were playing guitar solos, Jay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I know some friends who played the game a long time ago, found some old cards, sold it, and then like bought a car. So it's kind of crazy. <laughs> wow. Yeah. wow. Yeah. So what are you working on now at Riot Games? So at Riot Games, uh, I work on a game called League of Legends. It's uh, <laughs> all right, three people who play. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, pretty popular. Uh, we have 67 million active players every month. What? So yeah, it's, it's a it's, small amount. 
It's uh, it's currently uh, one of Mildly the most popular. <laughs> one of the most popular games in the world right now. Wow. Yeah. And uh, how do you know how many people is it online? Yep. So it's all online. Uh, mm -hmm. It's team two teams of five battle it out and uh, try to defeat the other team, killing other champions and uh, ultimately blowing up the enemy base. Okay. Is there? Uh, do you mind if I ask if anyone in the audience has a question? Yeah, sure. Just is there anything? Just if you think about it, if you have anything you've ever wanted to know about the process of creating a game, just let me know. <laughs> you, I can tell is you're it like. Uh, it can be. So like, uh, if for those who don't know, in making video games, uh, players are really passionate, which is awesome. Uh, you know, people really care about the game. Uh, sometimes that can translate into being really aggressive about like w anything that changes, like if you change their favorite champion or if you make something that they think shouldn't belong in the game. Uh, and one of the things that Riot Games really works hard on is we really want to involve the player and like check out what they're interested in and excited about. But that also means listening to a lot of sometimes very negative feedback. And like any other creative process, it's about uh, coming up with strong ideas, believing in what you're making, and making it with the intent of like also being a player yourself and making things that you would be excited by or that the specific type of player you're trying to reach is going to be excited by. And mm -hmm. hearing the criticism, but learning how to filter out the stuff that isn't super useful. Mm -hmm. um, so like while playing the game, I've had people be like, hey, that's so awesome. I'm so excited you're in this game. I've also had people be like, you should die and feel bad for what you do. <laughs> <laughs> Do they know that you're one of the creators? Yeah, so when we play the game, uh, our, ta our ta uh, tagline, our, our battle tag always has Riot in the name. So uh, people are either excited or they're like really upset. <laughs> so it's like stand up, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's like they either love you or they hate you. Sometimes you get the hecklers and yeah. you get murdered over and over in the game because they're better than you. <laughs> yeah. well, I, I watch and rewatch Great British. Baking show over and over again. Good choice, yes, yeah. you even more fans for that show in here. <laughs> <laughs> and there was like uh, an episode where someone took somebody's thing out of the freezer and it melted, and the guy did not handle it gracefully, oh. and so he got kicked off. And then the next week, the person who had taken out, who was an older woman, and she got so attacked by the internet oh, no. uh, <laughs> that she didn't come back the, the next oh. week. I know. And the best thing, I just happened to read this today, the best thing was that the Great British Bake Off staff's response was, uh, you know, it was, pro they, it was only out for about 40 seconds. It wouldn't have melted it. Also, it's getting a little, this is so British, Seems it's getting a little nasty in here. We are talking about a show about cakes. <laughs> 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 Which is what I love and appreciate about that show. It's a little bit of perspective. perspective. Yeah. 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 It is and a very nice show. It is a very it's nice a show. Nice. And it's the same thing. Like we are playing a game with imaginary characters. But it's very serious. <laughs> <laughs> do you get serious? Do you get do you get do you ever get like inordinately angry in a way that I would be surprised to see. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's funny because uh, when I play the game, there's definitely moments where I'm like, oh, no, uh, rip you, and uh, <laughs> get really mad. But you know, I just yell at the screen, and then I'm over it you know, pretty quickly. Also, I'm really bad at the game, so that happens a lot. You're bad at it? I am, yeah, yeah. The new one? or see, Magic, you played a lot. Did you play that more than you've played the? Uh, yeah, I think I would be a little bit better than Magic than League. League is a really hard game. Um, so it's also played professionally as a sport. I don't know if you've ever heard of eSports. So uh, mm -hmm. League of Legends is kind of the video game that pioneered that whole kind of field. Are people doing it in like arenas? Uh-huh. So uh, uh, at Worlds last year, we had, I believe, like a huge stadium just filled with people watching it, like you would watch football. And they're just watching two teams of five battle it out with the game broadcast on a big screen. And, so. and are they each at a laptop? They're all at a, a you know, wired in a desktop and just like two really nicely set up like kind of places. And it's this whole big thing and we have amazing announcers who, uh, I, I, I was pretty new to the industry. I only joined Riot about a year ago and so when I saw it, I, my mind was blown because it was these announcers uh, are so good and they're just like, you know, your basketball announcers and just like calling out plays and helping <laughs> viewers understand what's happening wow. and also just like hyping it up, right? So. Is there trash talk? Are people like, I'm gonna crush your monster with my dragon? <laughs> Just like <Bitch>. that. <laughs> that uh, totally. The players, will, the players will trash talk, talk each other on Twitter and like, kind of like, you know, tweet little things. But uh, all, all of it is, you know, done in uh, in, in good sport, you know. Amazing. Some, mostly. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. Give yeah. it for Michael Eastow. Yeah. 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 What a fun job. Yeah. You think it'd be better?
better at it. Yeah, right. He also writes plays. He has an opera he wrote. Mm -hmm. that he wrote the lyrics to an opera he's going to get to go see produced in a couple weeks. Like, wow. He's an incredible, incredible writer. He's incredibly talented, too. He's, he can sing. Yeah, well, we're getting near the end of our show. Uh, he can. He can improvise and sing. He does mm -hmm. a solo show where he eats a pint of ice cream with an audience member mm -hmm. and then does a musical based on their life. So many talented people. Uh. But now it's time for us to take a moment. Uh, as you know, we're, we, we are a nonprofit. We need sponsors to make this show happen. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have any yet, uh, but we're trying. So we're taking a moment to thank our, our sponsors. We, we do have a kind of a sponsor. Uh, take it away, Bill. Hey, you. Yeah, you, I, I don't know your name. Uh, me, it's, uh, it's Brad. Whatever, it's not important. You care about your privacy, right? Oh, well, sure, yeah, oh my god, do I? I'm, I'm sick and tired of all these other uh, 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 social, these other social media uh, apps mining my data and then selling it to the highest bidder. Uh, don't play fucking coy, dude. We know you're talking about Facebook. <laughs> and that's why I'm here. I'm part of a social media site that doesn't care who you are or how many friends you have or what you do or whatever you're gonna post. I won't try to give you a sticker or whatever the hell it is when you say, I voted. Wow, well, well, that sounds like a dream come true. No, 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 tone it down, Brett. It's a social media website, not a cure for cancer. Here's the deal. You set up your page, you reach out to friends, you communicate, you chat, you do all the stuff that you'd otherwise do on Facebook, but we're just gonna be chill. We won't monitor your movement, we won't turn your phone's mic on when the app is open. You won't even notice we're a social media company. Wow, well that sounds amazing. What's, what's the name of this beautiful company? Google Plus. Oh. <laughs> cool and ambiguous. <laughs> Haven't I heard that name before? Yeah, here at Google Plus, we've created a platform that disrupts the idea of what social media really means in the physical world. Our new groundbreaking app lets you connect with friends, colleagues, crushes, none of whom will know what it is or how to use it. <laughs> well, how, how is it supposed to be better than Facebook? Oh, Chet, don't be ungrateful. <laughs> this network barely works, doesn't have any real purpose, and ultimately allows you to do all of those other things you've been meaning to do, but then got distracted. Watching videos of parents throwing American cheese slices on the faces of their infants. <laughs> and you're doing this while you're pooping. And now you've been sitting on that toilet in that position for an hour. And you want to get up, but you're, you're afraid you can't get up. So you make a funny post about it, which gets a like from a girl you met at summer camp when you were 12, and you haven't seen her since, but you're like 38 now, dude. Like, why are you friends with her? And then someone knocks at the door, and you realize you've been in the only bathroom at your nephew's bris for over an hour. <laughs> and you're like gonna have to come out, and it's gonna be awkward, and you probably won't be invited back to your sister's house ever again. And then, then you'll see your nephew grow up through social media and wonder how it ever got to be like this because your whole existence is lived through your shitty phone. Jesus Christ. But here at Google Plus, <laughs> we're not like that. Make a post or, or don't, we don't care. Well, that sounds way better. Thanks, mister. Google Plus, we're not even a thing anymore. <laughs> Give it up for our sponsors, for Carl and for Phil McKinley. Google Plus. Google Plus, sponsor us <laughs> with all that money you're saving from running a thing anymore. <laughs> we're not even a thing. All right, anymore. we're we're at the the final final stage of uh, this show. Then remember, there'll be a break, and then we'll have a concert. But before that, we're going to bring them out for a second number. Please welcome back to the stage, Seda. Seda. This next song is a rumba. Ah, uh, you were late. You were late. <laughs> Take two. This next song is a rumba. Ah. Oh. Yeah.
Thank you. <laughs> let's, let's wait and see what happens.